Hey everybody, my name is Katie. I'm going to be doing my final genetics presentation on propionic acidemia. So you may be asking, what is propionic acidemia? Um, it's abbreviated PA. So PA is a genetic con condition or disorder that causes difficulty metabolizing proteins and fatty acids that are taken in through the diet, just normal diet. And the reason why a person might have difficulty metabolizing these, these things is because they have a deficiency in the propionyl COA carboxylase enzyme, which is produced by the mitochondria. This enzyme can either be deficient due to the amount that is produced, or it can be mutated and non-effective. The cause of the mutations and deficiencies in this enzyme are mutations in the PCCA and PCCB genes. These are both genes that can cause propionic acidemia, or PA. Type 1 PA is caused by a mutation in the PCCA gene. Type 2 is caused by a mutation in the PCCB gene. Typically, a person will have a mutation in one or the other, but it is possible for someone to have a mutation in both. Um, both, of these things, both of these mutations can cause, cause deficiencies in the enzyme and decrease production. They are both found in similar areas on chromosome 13 on the submetacentric Q arm or the long arm below the centromere in chromosome 13. This is indicated by the green star in chromosome 13 here. This is just the proximate location. So in order for a person to be diagnosed with PA, which typically happens during the neonatal period of life, so the first couple hours, days, weeks post-birth, a physician will typically identify a lethargy and hypotonia, so very just slow, non-reactive, tired infant coupled with low muscle tone, um, poor feeding. Sometimes this is due to the fact that poor muscle tone may cause issues with the sucking reflex that allows an infant to eat, um, vomiting and diarrhea, um, pancytopenia, which is a lack of all formed blood elements. And these things alone do not indicate that a person has PA. This has to be coupled with metabolic acidosis, which is confirmed with clinical lab tests we're going to discuss on another slide. Ultimately, if these signs and symptoms are not recognized and tested for, a child can have a very poor neurological outcome, including issues with seizures, poor cognition, intellectual disabilities, and permanent brain damage, and Again, this has to be coupled with metabolic acidosis, and ultimately, this can lead to coma and or death from kidney failure, liver failure, um, and cardiomyopathy. Like I, like I said before, clinical lab testing has to be done prior to diagnosing a person with PA, and even these tests have to be confirmed with genetic testing. So typically, an infant will have tests such as urinalysis and blood tests performed performed that test for specific acids. Um, urinalysis with organic acidurea, which just means acids in the urine, organic acids that are in the urine. Um, hyperacidemia, which high acid in the blood, so the pH will typically be lower than it should be for the average person. Um, and again, genetic testing has to be done to confirm the diagnosis. So who's affected by this condition? Approximately 1 in 100,000 children are born every year having PA, either type 1 or type 2. There's not a, an abnormal amount of males versus females that are born with this condition. However, certain ethnic groups do have a predisposition to having more severe forms of PA. So the genetic testing options that are available to confirm this diagnosis um, are in two categories, both biochemical and molecular. Biochemical deals with um, the enzymes that are specifically produced, and molecular genetic testing deals with the specific codons and the specific sequences of the gene in question. They're aimed at finding out the specific mutation in both of these genes. This can be decently expensive. Some tests can run up upwards of $800 to $1,000 per test, and sometimes multiple tests are needed to confirm or deny the presence of specific mutations. This condition can be difficult to manage, um, even though dietary management seems like a very easy fix. Throughout the child's life, they have to decrease protein intake, including for essential amino acids. Again, essential amino acids are things that the body has to have to function. So because these individuals cannot properly metabolize these. They have to be monitored. 
they have to have their diet supplemented with more usable forms of these amino acids. And this is done with long-term management of geneticists, physicians, and nutritionists, which again can be a financial and time-consuming process. And frequently these children will have acute metabolic crises. This is acute metabolic acidosis related crises. This can be um, issues with their liver and kidney, sometimes requiring dialysis and long-term inpatient treatment. And they are treated usually with bicarbonate, which is a more basic substance due to the fact that this condition is acidotic in nature. It needs a basic treatment. A lot of times a strain that is put on these families or the need to relocate near metro, major metropolitan centers because the hospitals that typically deal with neonatal PA especially and pediatric PA are located in major cities. So sometimes families, due to the frequency with which they need treatment for their affected um, member, they need to relocate. And again, requires constant and regular management with a variety of different specialists. In order for a person to inherit PA, which is an autosomal recessive condition, which means the cells of the body, not gametic cells, both parents have to have a recessive copy of the alleles. That means that each parent has to have one. Some parents can have both. The genotypes that are associated with PA are homozygous dominant, here indicated by two capital P's. Um, heterozygous, which is one capital P, one lower P, and homozygous recessive, which is the only genotype resulting in PA. And here I've included just a basic chart with a couple different generations of individuals that are either carriers of the recessive allele for propionic acidemia. And <clears throat> This just shows that it can be hidden in families for generations. You can carry the recessive allele for PA without expressing any characteristics of the disorder. You're not going to know that you carry this, this allele until potentially you have a child that has PA and you discover that both you and your partner must at least carry one copy of the recessive allele. Some individuals can live long and healthy lives with PA with regular management, but oftentimes it does cause premature death or death prior to normal life expectancy. So I hope this, um, this presentation gave you just a little bit more information on what PA is, what causes PA, and some potential treatments. I've included a list of all of my references here um, from previous projects <clears throat> that we've done in this class. I really hope this helped you learn something, and uh, good luck with the, the final exam, everybody. Thank you.